Welcome, my name is Daphne Broadhurst. I'm a nurse with Medical Pharmacies and Ontario Medical Supply. Today we're going to look at some tips and tricks to prevent and manage air and line alarms associated with the CAD Solus pump. We've opted to provide the CAD Solus infusion pump due to its enhanced patient safety features. However, no technology is perfect. So we're going to look at how we can minimize those alarms associated with air in line. They can have a significant impact on both the patient in terms of missed doses of therapy, patient dissatisfaction, and for nursing it may mean extra nursing visits or nursing calls, and all of that increases the cost of health care and affects quality of care. So let's look at how we can optimize outcomes related to the use of this pump. The pump is built with an integrated air detector. If air is detected in this portion of the tubing that passes by the air detector, an alarm will sound and the pump stops. Please note that the air detector can be turned off. However, our pharmacy sends the CAD Solus pumps out to patients with the air detector enabled as a patient safety measure to minimize the risk of air embolism. The incidence of air embolism is not actually known but the limited literature available indicates it is of rare frequency. However, as it is a preventable iatrogenic condition with the potential for catastrophic outcomes, the decision has been made to keep the air detector safety feature enabled. We also send out administration sets with air eliminating filters to further prevent air emboli from occurring. So let's look at how we can minimize these disruptions by firstly preventing the alarms from occurring and then addressing how to manage the alarms. If a single bubble greater than 400 microliters is detected, the pump will alarm. In addition, the pump also calculates the amount of small air bubbles passing the detector. If there is a buildup of more than 1 ml in 15 minutes, the pump will alarm. Let's look at some strategies to reduce air alarms across the infusion process. How to assist in preventing air alarms when preparing the infusion. Infusing a chilled solution may cause air bubbles to form as the cold solution warms. Remove the solution from the fridge several hours prior to infusion, unless otherwise indicated, such as a drug as meropenem. If the visit nurse is changing the bag, the nurse can either call the patient or instruct the patient to remove the bag prior to the visit. Remove all air from the syringes prior to adding the solution to the IV bag. You can invert the bag or just gently rock it. Never shake the bag or that will create additional bubbles. Close the clamp on the tubing set prior to spiking the IV bag. With the bevel up, Spike the bag, ensuring that the spike is fully inserted into the port of the IV bag. Open the clamp. How to prime the air out of the tubing. It is critical that you remove all air from the fluid pathway in the administration sets to prevent the risk of air embolism. The manufacturer recommends using the priming feature on the pump to prime the tubing, rather than priming it by gravity, to ensure the filter is primed properly. Remove all air from the IV bag. Our pharmacy removes air during compounding of the bag, however in transport or with temperature changes, there may be large or more often those small champagne bubbles that form. We do not recommend accessing the port of the bag with a syringe and needle to remove the air because of the risk of contamination. Therefore, you can invert or turn the bag upside down while priming to expel the air out of the bag at the beginning of priming. This will position the air at the bag outlet port so that the air is eliminated from the IV bag. Squeeze or flick any trapped air out of the ports or corners of the bag. Air sometimes gets trapped in the cassette portion of the tubing. Some patients have recommended that you turn the pump to face the right so that the cassette is positioned vertically with the filter end of the tubing coming up out of the top of the pump. This minimizes trapped air as the air rises up out of the cassette. Observe the cassette portion to see if there are any air bubbles. 
Flick any air out, ensuring that the pump is positioned so that the air rises up towards the end of the tubing. You do not want to position it whereby the air will rise back up towards the bag. Tap the filter and remove any air bubbles out of the tubing. Now let's look at a few tips to avoid air alarms while the pump is running. Once the pump is running, if the patient is having recurrent air alarms, you can suggest positioning the IV bag upright so any remaining air is trapped at the top of the IV bag rather than the outlet port. You can also suggest that the patient taps the bag so any air in the reservoir remains at the top of the bag. Consider suggesting to the patient to tap the bag at night when going to bed and positioning the bag upright to send and keep air bubbles up at the top of the bag. Some patients have found it effective to roll the empty portion of the bag so that if there's any air it remains in that empty portion of the bag rather than the fluid. When the reservoir is empty, stop the pump before replacing a fluid container. Close the clamp prior to removing the IV bag from the tubing to prevent introducing air into the bag. You and your patient need to have a plan for managing air in line alarms. Teach your patient how he or she should manage an air alarm. If they are unable to prime the pump, ensure they know how to silence the alarm and to call the nurse to discuss how to manage the alarm. They should be aware that if they turn the pump off, this could create further complications, such as catheter occlusions or missed doses of prescribed therapy. When a pump detects air in the fluid path in this portion of the cassette, the pump will alarm air in line and stop running you will be prompted to press silence and acknowledge to clear the alarm. Inspect the tubing, including the portion in the cassette. If air is visible, when the pump will ask prime tubing, press the white key below that indicates yes. If the pump does not display prime tubing, press tasks, then prime tubing, and then yes to prime tubing. Close the clamp, disconnect the tubing from the patient, open the clamp, and select prime until all of the air is primed out of the administration set. To prevent air embolism, ensure that the entire tubing is free of all air bubbles before connecting to the patient. Press start and yes to restart the infusion. When the pump alarms and there is no visible air, some patients have found it effective to simply turn the pump off and on and restart the infusion. If this is not effective, you can try taking the cassette off, inspect the cassette for air. Flick any air that may be in the tubing, ensuring that the tubing remains situated along the center of the cassette plate. Reattach the cassette and restart the pump. Let's quickly review some of the key tips to address air and line alarms. This concludes our tutorial. Thank you to Smith Medical for providing the grant to produce this video. We hope that these tips and tricks will help minimize the frequency of air and line alarms that are experienced with the CAD Solus infusion pump and provide some direction on how to manage these alarms. Thank you.